United Nations is a unique organization of independent countries that have voluntarily joined together to work for world peace and economic and social progress. It is the foremost organization in the world working for women's rights and the advancement of women. United States support of and leadership of the United Nations is essential to successfully achieving the goals and objectives of the world organizations. Whereas all citizens of the United States and throughout the world are encouraged to observe the birthday of the United Nations on October 24th, 2017. Now, therefore, I, Robert Mayor, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of Joliet, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, have the distinct honor of proclaiming the October 24th, 2017 as United Nations Day in the city of Joliet in recognition of the commitment of the United Nations, Zanta International, and the Zanta Club of Joliet to the advancement of the status of women internationally, nationally, and in the Joliet area. It's signed by Mayor Robert Odekirk, October 17, 2017. Thank you very much. We are very pleased to be here tonight. Uh, Zanta, as a women's club, has about 30,000 members throughout the world in about 65 countries. And here in Joliet, we of course, as you know, have a lot of projects active in the local area. But with the coordination of the United Nations, we're also working internationally. And I just want to mention a couple of projects that we are active in throughout the world. In Africa, uh, we have a project in Liberia, and we coordinate with the UNFPA, one of the UN agencies, United Nations Fund for Population Activities. In Liberia, we're working with maternal and newborn mortality. In Niger, also in Africa, and coordinating with UNICEF, we're working uh, for the rights of adolescent <coughs> girls, encouraging them to stay in school. In Madagascar also, we are active with UNICEF in a project called Let Us Learn for um, vulnerable girls who may drop out of school. We also uh, are working in Nepal towards the elimination of human trafficking of women and girls. Each of these projects that I've talked about has a funding of more than a million dollars. Also, uh, our local organization has a special project in Afghanistan coordinating with a women's learning center in the western part of the country. And there we're working with education and also income generation. So we're very happy to be here. And uh, next Tuesday is United Nations Day. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Next, we have a proclamation regarding the Red Ribbon Week for 2017. for me whereas the theme of the red ribbon 2017 is your future is key so stay drug free 
Whereas the drug and alcohol abuse has a devastating effect, not only on the individual, but also the family and the entire community. Whereas research indicates that young people who avoid the early use of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs are less likely to engage in the self-destructive behaviors and the actions that take place, individuals in the community, property, in its harm's way. Whereas the Illinois Drug Education Alliance, Chestnut Health Systems, Greater Joliet Alliance for Youth, J as we call it, Southwest Coalition for Substance Abuse Issues, Lockport Homer Coalition for Substance Abuse, the First Assembly of God, and the Roger Powell Christian Committee, I'm sorry, Children's Committee, in the little, in this one contact, <laughs> are promoting the Red Ribbon Campaign throughout the state to raise awareness and constantly remind us of the dangers of illegal drug use. And let me also add in there the Will County Coalition for Substance Abuse Prevention. Whereas 2017 observance of Red Ribbon Week provides residents of Joliet the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to healthy drug-free lifestyles by actively participating in Your Future is Key, So Stay Drug-Free. Now, therefore, I, Robert Oderkirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet, Illinois, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby proclaim October 23rd through the 31st, 2017 as Red Ribbon Week throughout the city of Joliet and encourage all citizens to work together in making a healthy community and a safe place to live. Dated October 17, 2017, Mayor Robert Odeker. We have a few tokens, as usual, to pass out. You guys give everybody up there one. Everywhere, wherever you see somebody sitting without a ribbon, give them one. Thank you. 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 The Red Ribbon Campaign is the oldest and largest drug prevention program in this nation. It reaches millions of young people during Red Ribbon Week, which is, as we've heard, October 23rd through the 31st. Every year, it's, the, it's that time. Red Ribbon Week is an ideal way for people and communities to unite and take a visible stand against drugs. The Red Ribbon Campaign was started when drug traffickers in Mexico City murdered a DEA agent. His name was Kiki Camar uh, I always mess his name up. <laughs> his name was Kiki Camarilla, uh, Camarilla. That's it, Camarena. Uh, okay, I think I said it right that time, Camarena. <laughs> in 1985, this began the continuing tradition of displaying red ribbons as a symbol all over, and this symbol of intolerance toward the use of drugs. The mission of the red ribbon commitment toward the creation of drugs of um, drug as a drug-free America, a whole nation, a drug-free America. But I am honored because I know that my city here in Joliet also is representing Red Ribbon. Even though it's 
all over the nation. It's all over the state. I am just proud to say that the city of Joliet will show their commitment to drug-free lifestyles through the symbol of red ribbons, as well as awarding us this proclamation during Red Ribbon Week. That theme which says, your future is key, so stay drug-free, is one that I would like everybody, all of us, to just keep that in mind, because that is truly the goal. If they can stay drug-free, um, of a community we would have. And I just want to say thank you to Mayor Odeker and all of the council members as you so graciously do this for us every year. We thank you. It is so important. We thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, may we get a picture? Ms. Powell, get a picture as well. Next is Mayor Oderkirk appointments. None this evening. Approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written? Motion to approve. Second. Been motion seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hugs. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. Citizens to be heard on agenda items. Is there anyone present that would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? Seeing none, council committee reports, economic development committee report. <clears throat> the economic development committee met on October 12, 2017 here at City Hall. On the committee is Councilman Mudrin, Councilman Morris and myself. We had one item and it was a TIF agreement, it's just a standard TIF agreement with, uh, I get my notes to work. Um, for what's known as the Catholic Charities building downtown here. What's the address again? I can't get my 201 North Ottawa. 201 North Ottawa. It's being developed by John Bays. It's another one in the, in, in, in the uh, puzzle, small pieces of the puzzle for downtown. Um, and I don't think I'm letting any cat out of the bag since he said it at the, the meeting. He's shooting, he's, he's going to completely redo the building. He's already raising the roofs and so forth and so on. I won't give you the details. It's going to be beautiful. The outside's already been improved. And on the bottom, <coughs> he wants some commercial. Particularly, he's going to be a restaurant for the most part. And he's shooting for, and, may, and has a good chance, I would think, to get a Cooper's Hawk or an Olive Garden. I know there's a lot of Olive Garden people out there. And he's actually offered to any of these types of restaurants that he's talking to, a million of money to customize their standards. He's got plenty of parking on the adjacent parking lot. So I'm pretty excited about this. I think this will be a good project downtown. And that's all we had for the, for the economic development committee, very positive. Finance committee report. There are the finance committee comprised of Councilman Girl, Councilman Mudrin and myself. We're here at the, in the uh, Executive Conference Room at 5.30 this afternoon to uh, review the following items. Uh, first thing on the agenda was the renewal of group health, dental, vision, and life insurance programs, which I would ask uh, Council Mudrin to, uh, to uh, kind of go over that a little bit. I'd like to uh, thank our staff, uh, Ken Mihalich and uh, Val Hall, on all the work they did 
uh, through the year here and at the end here with Blue Cross to work on the renewal numbers with that also. Uh, the Arthur J. Gallagher company, it's uh, the brokerage firm that we use, and Phil Elgozano uh, as our local representative. Uh, the results are very good for us as a city. Uh, overall, medical premiums decreased uh, approximately a little more than 10 percent. The dental uh, premiums have decreased uh, also, and they were able to negotiate with the for Dearborn National, which is an arm of Blue Cross, the life insurance contract uh, for a new three-year rate guarantee at lower rates than where we're at today. Uh, also, uh, a thank you to Blue Cross for the work uh, they're doing throughout the industry and uh, supervising claims and verifying no duplication of claims. So Blue Cross, thank you very much for that. So it is, it is our recommendation at this time to approve the renewal with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois for 2018. Thank you. Um, the other thing was discussion of food and beverage tax online payments with uh, Azabar and um, it's, it includes a food and beverage tax online, um, hotel and motel tax, uh, motor fuel tax, and uh, vehicle tax where the businesses can uh, uh, file, file for or file their returns online. Um, it will free up uh, staff time. Um, it will uh, be a cost savings to the city. Uh, some smaller businesses who uh, may not have access to uh, a computer or, or are concerned about how it works, there will be a kiosk that's here at City Hall and a staff member to walk them through it on how to do it. But uh, it will be a financial win for the city and uh, provide some uh, accuracy and easier to audit. Uh, we also reviewed the monthly financial report, personnel summary, travel expense report, and invoices paid and recommend their approval. Land use and legislative committee report. Yes, land use uh, committee, land use and legislative committee met uh, last Tuesday, uh, October 10th here in the council chamber. Uh, in, in attendance was myself along with uh, committee members Councilman Dickerson, Councilwoman Quillman. Also in attendance was Councilwoman Gavin. Uh, our first uh, agenda item was the inflatable bounce house location that it came before uh, Council. Uh, this time it came, uh, staff brought it back with some revisions, which were uh, a 48 hour limit on the bounce house if they're placed in the uh, front and side yards of a home. I know before uh, we was restricting the uh, use all together. So now a, a family can use it in the front yard for 48 hours or the side yard. Uh, so it came to move to council, uh, move for approval to full council. Uh, the second item uh, on our agenda was the electronic message center. We know there's been a moratorium placed on them. So staff uh, have worked real closely with some of the sign companies in our area and they were in attendance and uh, spoke uh, well of staff working with them. They, they really uh, came to some, some uh, agree that there should be some type of ordinance in place for the uh, electronic message uh, signs. Although uh, we, we didn't move it to council, uh, staff was given directions to bring it back at our next meeting, which would be actually, I believe, November the 2nd. Uh, so <clears throat> we will have this done before the moratorium is uh, uh, out. So staff was given directions to uh, uh, bring that back for the ordinance to be voted on at our no uh, November meeting. Uh, our next item was the uh, regular items now. Uh, so it was a lot of discussion. Staff uh, has been uh, as well as an additional ordinance. Uh, it was asked to be tabled, so I believe that should be also at our next November meeting uh, with a vote to uh, have it moved to full council for, with some type of direction. No, I pulled it. From the, it's not going to be on the agenda. It's not going to be on the agenda. I table okay. indefinitely. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. All right. <coughs> the next item is the third 
uh, addendum to the Sinai <coughs> Joliet Boundary Agreement. And this is our last agenda item. And I, I didn't give Marty a heads up, but I'm gonna ask him to explain that one. So if he doesn't mind. Sure, that, that is a, a request by Shanahan to extend the boundary agreements, like change it so they, you know, a, a piece of land is on their side of the boundary except ours. So I think we did table that one and that'll, that'll be back and we'll have someone for that. Thank you. We had talked, I thought you were working on an ordinance for the, the, the cats and dogs. Is that still in? in it, was, it was presented and it was, it was tabled, so. We need to talk about it, Mayor, after, privately. Okay. Well, I would like to see something done. Okay. Move forward on something. Well, <clears throat> the state of California has banned totally, <clears throat> okay? And Crest Hill passed an ordinance the other day, unanimously voting for an ordinance. However, it didn't seem that it was going to get passed here at committee level, so I wanted to talk to you more about it later. That's why we tabled it, because okay. the votes weren't there to, to, uh, to go forward. Public Service Committee. The Public Service Committee met today here at City Hall at 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> in attendance was Councilwoman Gavin, Councilman Dickinson, and myself. For the most part, these were uh, contracts and change orders related to previously let contracts. So they're all on the agenda tonight. There were <clears throat> two items of note. One item was for a stop sign to be placed at uh, the corner of Oneida and Nicholson Street. And after some discussion and the presentation from staff um, on why they were recommending against it, it was voted two to one to go ahead with the stop sign recommendation to go ahead I should say the other one was concerning a resolution authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Crest Hill uh, and it had to do with traffic uh, traffic lights to be installed and uh, in addition to widening at the corner of Gaylord Road and Division Street and <clears throat> that's out in my I'm very familiar with this out of my district to the far north side and I still get complaints from not only Joliet residents, but a smattering across the street on the east side of Gaylord from actual Crest Hill residents that the village of Crest Hill had decided to put up warehouses along Division. That is their right. <clears throat> and part of their agreement would appear to be that they have to improve the intersection of Gaylord and Division to accommodate this high volume of truck traffic that's been produced. Now, the city, to give you background, <clears throat> was not necessarily... was cool to the idea of warehouses in that location, but that wasn't their, the city of Joliet, wasn't their, you know, right to, to, to say, but they had asked originally that truck traffic be routed only east to Weber Road and not coming through the neighborhoods, and Crest Hill insisted on coming into the, you know, the residential area and, and to this, this uh, intersection to the point that I believe we went to court, um, and Crest Hill won. The court said if they want to put tra 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 traffic to the west, they can. <coughs> so after this history and the discussion, the committee voted 3-0 to, to recommend against entering this. It doesn't stop Crest Hill from being able to do what they do in their own jurisdiction, but we are not going to, we don't feel as good. The residents that live there in Joliet wouldn't think it was a good expenditure of city resources, time, and money to take on responsibility, for all of the lights at that intersection that would ultimately be installed at Crest Hills, on Crest Hills dime, from now until forever, we'd be responsible for the manpower to fix them and maintain them for any cost to improve or replace them or fix them for parts. And that would just be a slap in the face to the residents who were very, and are still very vocal against the industrial park right in the middle of a residential area. So that's what the recommendation, that's the history behind it and what the recommendation came from, unanimously to vote against taking any part in that improvement of that intersection. Mayor, I have a question. Yes. Have we talked to uh, Crest Hill about, you know, sharing that cost of maintenance? I mean, did they pass this at their meeting the other night, like in a governmental agreement with <clears> us? <throat> well, it's my understanding that their agreement with the developers, those that have been brought in and built their warehouses, they have to make <coughs> improvement, okay? Mm -hmm. Not stopping them. No, it's understood, be understood. On their dime. It should be completely on their dime. It was against what our own residents wanted. In fact, it was against what many of their residents lining 
So I guess, I guess my question is, if we're doing an intergovernmental agreement and it's for their benefit, why are we getting stuck with all the cost? Well, we won't know, we won't. But it's, rec well. Right. But it's yeah. already been discussed with them. That's why I wonder why it wasn't discussed before it came to us. Well, they've got to go ahead with it no matter what. That's, that's their obligation, that's their development, that's their jurisdiction. We just don't have to participate financially and, and, and you know, you know, and be liable for that intersection or for, for the improvements. And, and again, mainly because the residents didn't want it to begin with. They wanted it to go east. Okay. So they have to do it no matter what, is my understanding. Jim, am I correct? They, they've got to make that improvement no matter what. Would you mind, Mayor, if I bring Jim up? No. Yes, sir. Yeah, Chris Hill actually started the, pro initiated the project out there. Um, they got STP funds, service transportation program funds from the Will County Governmental League. They're the lead agency. They're doing all the work. Um, typically with STP funds, 80% uh, for the construction costs and the phase three engineering is covered by the federal money and 20% has to be covered by the local share. What Crest Hill um, is requesting is that if they pay the local share of the cost, the city wouldn't pay any of the cost of the construction or the engineering. They ask the city to be the ones to maintain the traffic signals they're installing there. So that, to answer your question, Jan, we would never not be liable for any of these construction costs or engineering costs for this project, which is underway. Either way, it is. Uh, they went ahead without even getting an intergovernmental agreement approved with it, it okay. from, like from two years ago, roughly. Uh, they're now asking if we would sign this agreement that the city would be responsible for the traffic so it would maintain it. Okay. Thank you. Now I have the whole picture. Yes. Jim, do you have any idea what maintenance costs would be on those signals per year? Well, you know, the first couple of years, you're not going to have much maintenance at all on the signals. After that, you know, you're going to periodically go out there probably a couple times a year, um, pull out the equipment out there and man manpower. You know, it could be a couple thousand dollars a year. Okay, thank you. What's in there? Yeah, no, well, actually back into my committee report, or should I wait for comments? I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, I, I wanted to do it while it's kind of fresh on my mind. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Quillman had spoke about the, the the tabling, and and that's why I had asked uh, you, Councilwoman, you know, why were we tabling it? Because we were prepared to vote. I don't know how the vote would have went. Uh, uh, legal had given us two different proposals or two different ordinances to go with. I don't know, and, and help me, Marty, if I'm wrong, if we'd have voted, I'm just saying, I don't know how the vote would have went there, if we'd have voted not to uh, recommend it, it could still, it would it be possible, Mary, for it still to come to council? Because, I, I mean, I'm the one that like the full council to weigh in on an issue. At the committee level, we are giving our recommendation. And even if that may be not favorable, would we still, unless we did it as a committee of whole or, or something, because as the mayor said, I would like to see this voted on, whichever way it goes, you know, I, I'm not, I haven't lobbied any other council people. I have my opinion on it uh, and I will express that at that time. But I, I, I think we need to move on it if we have to bring it as a committee of whole or if we could bring it with the, uh, uh, if, 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 as Councilwoman Quillman said, she felt it would have been a no vote to approve it, maybe it would have been, maybe not, uh, but to, to move it on, and that might help stop some of the harassing phone calls and emails that I'm getting. I don't know if any of the other council people are getting it, and not that I mind that. I, I don't have a problem with people speaking their mind, but sometimes it gets overbearing, and I think we need to, you know, move one way or the other, because I, I don't know what what else? Is, I mean, the committee is the committee, and unless you know the mayor, you know, changed the, the committee members or something. So, and there was a bunch of questions in there. I know. <laughs> so gen generally, if if it doesn't come out of committee, it doesn't make it. But of course, you know, it's up to the committee if they want to, you know, move it forward without a recommendation. That's. You can do that too. So. Right. And but like I said, generally, it's no. It, it would depend on the motion that was put <laughs> right before the committee. So I asked for the table because, because many people still felt they didn't get enough chance to talk, even though, all due respect, Councilman Morris, you said, I'm here all night, and then you started cutting people off. And I was waiting for the vote from Crest Hill, 
And also I wanted the official documentation from the state of California on their ban because they're the first state in the whole United States to do this. This has to be stopped and I wanted more information before we brought it back to committee and before we brought it back to council. And I didn't feel that it was a good environment that evening and um, that's why I asked for the table and you both agreed to the table. You didn't have to agree to the table, but you did. Right, but I agreed to the table because you said that you wanted to talk to. I did, and I wanted to, and I wanted to talk to him again. Wanted to see what happened, Chris. Exactly. You never said that we didn't give anyone else time. No, gave, I'm saying I, that I, now. I, say, I didn't want to say that all that that night, but, but I'm saying it now. Place. But Councilman, you sh you should have whispered in my ear. The they, I could have stayed there all night if that's what it would have took. I did, Terry. I did. But. I mean, Councilman Dickinson, we 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 sat here and we listened to everybody. everybody I want to everybody say everybody kept coming up with the same. They kept coming up with the same thing. You know, so I, and that's why I asked you why were we tabling it, and you gave us those two reasons, and I had no problem with that. Well, if you don't have a problem, you're the chairman. Can we at the next meeting present the two ordinances and get an up or down vote on the ordinances? Yes, sir. And then we'll move forward. Yes, sir. Well, again, you know, I, this is, I, I don't know why the city of Joliet didn't, didn't pass it before. The city of Chicago passed it. They have a lot more businesses that would, this would um, affect than the city of Joliet. Right now, it's only affecting one little business. And it would give us recourse for these little businesses that are popping up, such as, I'm not going to name anybody personally right now. I don't want to attack anybody. But there have been several puppy businesses that have opened up, and we haven't been able to shut them down because we have nothing on the books. So if this ordinance goes down, we still won't be able to shut them down because we'll have nothing on the books. Um, I've been a big advocate of this for the last two, two, three years, and I was told we'll have to wait till Chicago passes their ordinance, and then the Chicago passed the ordinance, and um, I've been talking to different people, and nobody's in agreement with me. So I wanted to come to the full council with all that information before they voted on it because it didn't look fair. You know, we didn't vote on it, but I knew how it was going to go. Okay, I already knew how it was going to go. It was going to go down, and I didn't want it to go with a non-favorable agreement to the to the city council without all the facts. And I wanted to talk to council again about how our how our our ordinance was going to not only mirror Chicago, but maybe if we could do something different. And that's how we left it. I have not had time to. It was just last week, and I have not had time to talk to council about that at this point. But I did ask. Um, Chris Regis to look at other municipalities if they are thinking about this ordinance or putting another one into effect. And that's how I left it with him on Tuesday. So there's two being proposed, correct? There are two that were discussed at the meeting. There can be, I mean, there can be endless variations on the two also. And that's something that um, we can talk about. I'll, I'll prepare some things and I'll send it to Councilwoman Quillman and, um, We'll all work together to put something before the next uh, legislative committee meeting. Okay. And I might add that the people that are very passionate about this are the people that live in Joliet. They're the people that vote for everybody in this council to protect just a couple of people that don't even live here. I mean, we're here to serve our citizens, and if our citizens want this, we should pass it. And that's how I feel. Not only for that, but to also protect these poor animals that are just being bred for money. And as, as stated earlier, well, it's a business. Okay, prostitution is a business too. So we're not going to put them out because it's a business? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I hit, I've rescued animals before. I had an animal that was in the middle of the street on Route 6. And the dog was just thrown to the, toss, to the side of the road. And I will say this as I stated at the meeting that night. It was malnourished, but her, uh, you could see from the way her body was, and excuse my language here, but this is the proper term, her tits were swollen and, and hanging down. She was of no use because she had been bred time and time and time again. I called animal control. They came and got the dog. They took it. They, take, they took her down to a rescue because they said she has just had it with breeding, breeding, breeding. Now, I'm not saying all breeders are bad, but there are a lot of babies out there puppy mill places and they breed and breed and breed and they don't care anymore all for profit when does it stop if the city council doesn't take a stand where does it stop we protect everybody else why can't we protect these poor innocent animals i just don't get it and i'm really upset about this 
as you can tell. And there's a lot more going on. I mean, I've had a dog, another dog was a rescue dog. It came from a, a, a reputable breeder. The dog had more problems because it was interbred, interbred, interbred. I didn't buy the dog, but I got it as a rescue. And it, the stories go on and on and on. And if you read all the material that these people are sending us, you will understand if you have a, any bit of compassion in your heart at all, you will look at this it's one business, one little business in our town right now. Chicago can do it. The state of California can do it. I just don't know why the city of Joliet can't do it, why we can't be cutting edge. Well, I, think, I think we should. I think that's why we have to get, get the here. ordinances in front of the council. It got shut down on committee. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It, okay, Mayor, we'll talk about this later. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, so Chris, you, admit, you said back to the committee. It's going to just come back to the full council, right? The, after you say you're going to send something to Jan and work it out, and we're going to just, is, is that right? I know you had said it's coming back to the committee, but did you mean to come to the full council? The, the issue that presents itself with bringing a document in front of the full council is nobody can agree, or nobody has agreed, at least uh, up to this point, on which version of the document to bring in front of the council. So I propose to... Um, offer several different variations to the legislative committee at the next meeting and uh, the committee can proceed how they see fit. They can approve one, they can deny all of them, they can approve all of them and ask that they all go to council or whatever you guys want to do, we'll do it. Okay. Like good. I said, that, that's the issue with bringing something before the full council. We need to know exactly what to bring before the council. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I show no other reports. <coughs> Under consent agenda, approval of the minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the pre-council meeting held on October 2nd and the minutes of the council meeting held on October 3rd, 2017. Stand approved as recorded. Invoices paid report. It's recommended this report be received and placed on file. Council memo 549-17, regular payroll for September 1st through September 14th, 2017, $3,208,000. $335.57. It's recommended said regular payroll be approved. Council Memo 550-17, position vacancies job descriptions. It's recommended the city manager be authorized to fill one senior systems engineer position in the IT department, one senior network engineer in the IT department, one public utilities administrator in the public utilities department, and one custodian foreman position and any subsequent vacancies which may occur with these positions. Council Memo 551-17, Renewal of Group Health, Dental, Vision, and Life Insurance Programs. It's recommended the City Council authorize the City Manager to renew the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois PPO Health, Dental, and Vision Insurance Plans for all eligible employees and retirees. And also recommends the City Council authorize the City Manager to renew the Dearborn National Life Insurance Program for a three-year term beginning with the 2018 plan year. Council Memo 552-17, Disclosable Payment, IMRF Retirement, and Approval of the 2018 Joliet City Council Meeting Schedule. It's recommended this schedule be approved. Is there a motion to approve said consent agenda items? So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Motion carried. Under licenses and permit applications, Council Memo 554-17, issuance of a Class E liquor license, 1471 Rock Creek Drive, Holiday Inn. It's recommended the Holiday Inn be issued a Class <coughs> E liquor license. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 557-17, issuance of a Class C license, 2700 Plainfield Road, Fresh Time Market. It's recommended Fresh Time Market be issued a Class C liquor license. So moved. Second. In motion and seconded. To approve, Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. 
Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 556-17 is issuance of a Class B license, 2200 Route 59, Frankie's Tap. It's recommended Frankie's Tap be issued a Class B liquor license. Oh. Second. In motion seconded to approve, Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 557-17, transfer of Class C license, 712 West Jefferson Street, Stain Kelly. It's recommended Stain Kelly Liquors be issued a Class C liquor license. So moved. Second. In motion seconded to approve, Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Under public hearings, Council Memo 559-17, annexation of 138.5 acres at the southwest corner of Route 53 and Breen Road, classification to I-1 light industrial zoning, and approval of an annexation agreement. It's recommended this item be tabled to the December 19, 2017 council meeting. Motion to table. Second. To motion and seconded to table council memo 559-17 to the December 19th council meeting. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Motion carried. Under ordinances and resolutions, Council Memo 561-17, ordinance approving a vacation of a portion of Young's Road right-of-way, 3851 Young's Road, and a resolution accepting dedication of a newly constructed portion of Young's Road. This includes an ordinance approving a vacation of a portion of Young's Road right-of-way and a resolution accepting dedication of a newly constructed <coughs> portion of Young's Road. It's recommended set ordinance and resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Turk. Aye. <clears throat> Councilman Turk. Aye. Sorry. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 562-17 in ordinance approving and executing an amendment to the development agreement with Will County Development Corporation. It's recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Under resolutions, Council Memo 563-17, a resolution authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Crest Hill regarding the installation of traffic <coughs> signals at the intersection of Gaylord Road and Division Street. I would make a motion to deny. Second. Your Honor, can I ask one question? On this? Yes. Um, Marty, it says here in the council memo, the city of Joliet has jurisdiction of the north and west legs of the intersection, and the city of Crest Hill has jurisdiction of the <coughs> south and east. During the design phase of the project, the city of Joliet and the city of Crest Hill negotiated the financial obligations of each party. That was some time ago, correct? Uh, the financial obligations would be that they were going to install the traffic lights on our portion, right. and then we were subsequent in the future maintain the signals. That was negotiated some time ago, correct? I mean, uh, that, uh, but regarding the two legs, that was. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's been motion and seconded to deny Council Memo 563 17, which is a resolution authorizing <coughs> execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Crest Hill regarding the installation of traffic signals at the intersection of Gaylord Road and Division Street. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? No. Councilwoman Coleman?
Aye. Councilman Turk. I'm going to vote no based on the fact that, um, you know, I think that it's a dangerous intersection and for the cost of maintenance of the, of the uh, signals, it's, it provides our residents too with uh, protection. So I'll vote aye. I'll vote <coughs> Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Motion carried 6-2. The resolution was denied. Council Memo 564-17 is a resolution <coughs> authorizing the release of executive session minutes. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Bids and contracts, award of contracts. Council Memo 566-17. Request for authorization to award a contract for the generator replacement at City Hall and budgetary adjustment. It's recommended Council Memo 566-17 be approved. So moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Motion carried. Amendments, change orders, and payments. Council Memo 568 <coughs> 17. Approved change order number two for the 2017 sidewalk curb replacement project. Council Memo 569-17, approved change order number five for Osgood Street, 2nd Avenue Roadway Project. And Council Memo 570-17, approve amendment number one for the engineering design services construction management for the Joliet Minor League Baseball Park. It's recommended Council Memos 568-570-17 through 570 be approved. So moved. Second. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. City Manager's report. This past weekend was the Southwest Prairie Conference Cross Country Meet, which has in it competing many Joliet students. Councilman Hogg often points out that Joliet high schools are not just Central and West. So first I want to mention the Joliet schools that competed or that had students from Joliet. So it was Joliet Central, West, Plainfield Central, Plainfield South, and Manuka. So I want to congratulate the Plainfield South, the varsity boys, for winning the meet and both the freshman, sophomore, and the varsity girls from Manuka who won the meet. So congratulations to the teams. And then I also want to mention the difficult decision that, that the IHSA officials had to make at the meet. Saturday morning, if you think, there was a lot of thunderstorms and there was rain. and the, I mean, there was thunder and lightning. And I just hats off to the IHSA officials who condensed the meet and were able to fit everything in. So uh, congratulations to all the teams that competed and was able to, to squeeze it in. Then just a quick reminder, January 1st, 2018, weekly recycling begins. And again, January 1st, 2018, at your door, recycling and household hazardous waste begins. And there is a request for executive session. New business not for final action or recommendation? I have no. Old business or new business? Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing. Next is public comments. Robert Webb. Good evening, council members, administrative staff, concerned uh, community members. In the name of the most high creator of heaven and earth, Yeshua, extend this council our greetings of peace and friendship. Um, I was here to talk about what I kind of like put on you all's mind to think about the last time I appeared before you concerning um, the act of 1871. I was hoping that the uh, members of this council would act with due diligence and do their own independent uh, uh, research so that you know you better appreciate what I'm about to put on your minds to think about today concerning the, the boat on the land at 14 West Jefferson Street. 
Some time ago, there was this almost law librarian uh, at the law library, Gene, who ensured that all the necessary books that a um, federal citizen under the 14th Amendment needed to uh, have access to in order to better uh, defend uh, their federal uh, citizenship rights. Over the past couple of years, there's been um, substitute uh, law librarians that don't even have a degree in law library science who's been playing the role of uh, law librarians um, who have been sus um, more or less um, at the order of whoever's calling the shots at the uh, boat on the water or boat on the land um, and discarding these various books like the United States Codes, Federal Practice and Procedures, Federal Discovery, uh, they've been putting up these books for sale by the um, um, door where they got where lawyers can go and uh, <coughs> cough and things like that. Uh, the books that the taxpayers had paid for that they don't put out uh, public information about these books being for sale. <clears throat> Most recently, you know, I was in the law library and I heard a couple of these um, officers of court uh, boasting and bragging about um, why. They wanted to have a new courthouse so that they could have something to brag about in contrast comparison to the um, boat on the land over in DuPage County. Um, lately, they've been um, making these moves to uh, refer individuals to the Will County Bar Association, individuals who might be wanting to represent themselves. They're using the library as a referral center now, as opposed to the law library to do legal research. Suggesting that individuals go in, uh, to the Will County Bar Association um, to um, get referred to an attorney to uh, sign a contract. They charge, want to charge them a consultation fee of uh, $30, $15 for a half hour uh, discussion. But it doesn't seem you know, right to use or improperly use the law library as a referral center for the Will County <coughs> Bar Association or the uh, Prairie State, since the uh, practice of law is a common right. Um, they're not um, referring individuals to uh, other not-for-profit organizations who might have part of their organization uh, legal research uh, uh, abilities in order to, you know, guide individuals on in how to properly exercise their common right, which is the practice of law, according to the Constitution of the United States. Now, if anybody has taken time to read that Act of 1871, you understand that it would, um, it was a, a move on the part of the British barristers to usurp the Republic of the United States. It's something that's been gradually uh, put into action over the years. Um, one of the most notable um, incidents that took place in this, in this very room when all those documents were taken off the walls and allegedly was going to be put back up, the documents of the revolution, of the Republic. So I've had this um, boat on the land the ship on the land, 14 West Jefferson Street. Um, it shouldn't be used since the citizens of Joliet are looking to put up $10 million towards that particular new courthouse. That it's being used as a referral center or a private social club for members of the Will County Bar Association who are only supposed to be serving in the judicial branch of the government as officers of the court. They're not supposed to be in the legislative branch or the executive branch. That's not the role that they're supposed to be playing. Please wrap it up. Time's up. Well, at any rate, um, she's so concerned about, you know, dogs, breeding and stuff like that. What about being concerned about fellow community members who are being um, steered towards um, um, making these, entering into these contractual relationships with these officers of the court and the books that they have been placed in that law library for them to use in order to defend themselves have been systematically removed. I think that should be on the top of this, uh, this council's agenda. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak under public comments this evening? Mayor and council comments? Uh, nothing. 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 Nope. I said no. I have a couple. Um, number one, the ex exchange club had a firefighter of the year ceremony. They gave the award to Sean Carroll who um, passed away earlier this year. It was a very nice ceremony. So congratulations to the family of Sean Carroll that, that attended. Um, Motor Mat had a grand opening on October 11th out at 77 Republic. 
There was a grand opening today in the 500 block of Jefferson for Wings Around the World. And finally, Sunday was Take Back the Night. Uh, it was another great event, so thank you to everyone who came out for that. That's all I have. Oh, and then um, yeah, on behalf of the entire city council, I would like to extend condolences to former Councilwoman Brooke Hernandez Brewer for the untimely passing away of her husband. Um, condolences to, to Councilwoman Brewer and to her children and family that are left behind. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there a motion to go into closed session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, land acquisition, or conveyance pending or threatened litigation after which the meeting will be adjourned? So moved. Second. Motion seconded to approve. <coughs> Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hugs. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried.